Alright, so I'm going to go over the new map editor and included in Tropico 4. Um, Tropico 3 had a challenges editor, but it didn't actually allow you to fully customize the map uh, by adding resources or changing the terrain. Uh, they actually put that in the Tropico 4. So to get to it, you click on challenges, and then you go to manage. And now if it's your first time, you'll see this menu and you'll hit new. And you can name it whatever you want. This is my third, so I'm going to say third. And you can pick which island one of these, um, pick which island you start out at. So you can choose one of these pre-made ones, or you can choose random island. So we'll just do random island, and that'll give you a little bit more customizability for it. Um, if you want, you can mess with this. Otherwise, you just hit generate. It's going to be the same system that we had as the random map in Tropico Three. Except for some reason in Tropico 4, the random maps always have this little volcano. Um, so we're going to let that load. Okay, so here we are. Uh, you can see the user interface is pretty simple. Um, it's going to be fairly similar to if you've ever used the map editor in like Roller Coaster Tycoon or anything. You're going to have the raised terrain, and then your brush sizes are over here. So if you want to do small little hills, you can do that. If you want larger, just hold the mouse down and it'll keep rising it however you want. Um, you can fill in, if you have these internal lakes, you can use just raised terrain to fill those in. And that works the other way as well. If you do lower terrain, uh, that will actually create a lake. So there's no separate option for creating water. It's just if you get below sea level, when you're lowering the terrain, uh, you'll have water. And that'll be the same over here. If you want the coastline to be smaller, you can do that. If you want it to be bigger, you can fill it in. And then uh, if you want, like say you lower it out and you have these trees here, you're going to just go to delete objects, and that'll take them all out. So the next option here, well, there's level terrain. So that'll be helpful, like if it's get that annoying option that you can't build something because the terrain can't be leveled, you can go ahead and make your whole map level. Um, note that that does make it perfectly level. It doesn't like just smooth it. So if you want to actually smooth it, you'll go to smooth. And that will, for example, make uh, the gradients on these hills a little less steep. Or if you want to, after you raise the terrain, you want to make it a little, a little bit more natural, you can just go to smooth. And that will create more natural hills for you. Um, if you want to change the terrain itself, you go right here. It'll be the fifth option. And you have these options. So you have the sand, the flowers, desert, um, trees. This is going to be how, if you want to add more trees, you go in this menu for terrain types. So you can add a bunch of trees here, a bunch of trees here, and then that'll have plenty of trees for your furniture or lumber mills. And if you want different resources, you come up here, and this is the resources. So you can say iron, for example. I want a bunch of iron mills and this is great because it doesn't limit you. You can have as many iron or gold or bauxite or even oil any any quantity that you want. You can put it next to each other and this sort of lets you create um, what people refer to in other RTS games as a money map. So you can have tons of iron, tons of gold, tons of oil and not be restricted by money at all and just be completely free to do whatever you want. Um, this option, Crops and Beauty, this is just going to create the plants for the crops. It doesn't create the farms themselves. So I'm assuming that's just to get you sort of a head start. If you do want to make a lot of pineapple fields, you'll have them already grown, and then you just build the farms next to them. Um, you still have the annoying announcers when you play this game. The map editor. Uh, special buildings, that's just the Colonial Fort and Ancient Ruins. So if you want a fort over there, you can do it. If you want regular buildings, you just right click and there's your familiar uh, build menu. So you can have the you know, government, you can have a immigration office, you can put the go ahead and get your roads, your docks laid out and you can set it up as developed or undeveloped as you want to start out with. And that is more or less all the options. As I said before, I don't mess with the sequences or map mission description editor. That's for if you want to do a campaign style scenario with objectives and whatnot. Um, be aware if you are interested in doing that, that these two options require internet connection for some reason.
and it's not actually the same as Tropico 4. So if you have a firewall that has Tropico 4 allowed, these are still going to be blocked. I have a firewall, and you can see I click on them, precisely nothing happens. It's actually this separate program called Hedgehog that we're using. Um, I'm not sure what it is or why it's different, but if you want to use these options, you're going to have to go in your firewall and allow Hedgehog specifically. Other than that, um, I would say don't make the same annoying mistake that I made about 10 times, which is to say you're in the resources menu and you want to get out of it. Do not click this little X. You just right click off the screen. If you click this little X, it's going to exit the map editor. As soon as you click it, you're exiting. All it asks you if you want to save or not. So don't make the second mistake that I would always make and hit exit and then realize, no, I don't want to exit because that's asking you if you want to save it. And if you hit no, then you just lost everything you did.